Hi everyone. Uh, today we are going to talk about Microsoft Fabric, and Microsoft Fabric, uh, you know, recently got released uh, in in public preview. Uh, using Microsoft Fabric, we are going to build a uh, you know data analytics solution where we are going to have a lake house warehouse, and using lake house and warehouse, we are going to create few uh, Power BI report. Now, what is Microsoft Fabric? So, Microsoft Fabric is all-in-one analytics solution that we have in uh, Microsoft Data Platform. Uh, Using Microsoft Fabric, we can basically do any kind of data operation, starting from data ingestion, data engineering, data analytics, data science, data visualization. So we will we, we'll quickly get into a blog post uh, that, that I've written. I'll describe the demo scenario and quickly we'll jump into the demo and let's let's understand a, a Microsoft Fabric today. So here is the blog post uh, that I have published. I'm going to uh, give the link of this blog post in the, in the uh, description of the video. Now, if I look at the Microsoft Fabric, as I was explaining, uh, we have a lot of you know new capabilities in Microsoft Fabric. One of these, you know, one of the exciting things is that you know it's a complete analytics platform that I was uh, I was I was telling before. It is a lake centric and open. I think this is you know we have you know different compute engine in Microsoft Fabric. Uh, all those compute engines are going to save the data in the same park delta parquet format. So that means any engine you know that is storing the data. Other engine can consume the data, so we really no need to do any data movement. So we used to have an import mode, and then we used to have the direct query mode. Now each of the options has some kind of advantage and disadvantage. If we need to talk about the import mode, uh, import mode is really fast, but then you know you have the problem with data refresh. Uh, you know you own, you know we can't basically keep you know huge amount of data. If we have terabytes of data sitting in a database or data lake, uh, it is impossible to bring those terabytes of data into the Power BI. And you know to avoid those kind of scenarios. So if we have a big data, and you know if we still would like to do Power BI reporting on top of that big data, what we used to do before, we used to do the direct query. Now direct query has the advantage that you know it can query any amount of data set. But then it has a problem when Power BI used to query the data uh, from the database. It it is it was not that fast compared to the import mode. For now, if we take the advantages from input mode and the advantages of the direct query mode, so let's think that you know we, we if we can perform operation in a same speed like input mode on a huge data set, nothing like it, right? So in the direct click mode, we can basically do the same thing. We can get the same speed as the input mode, but at the same time, we can query on a huge amount of data that is sitting in our data lake. So this is the data flow diagram that we have. So we're going to follow. Uh, the Medellin architecture that we have. We are going to have the raw where we are going to download the uh, uh, New York YOLO taxi trip data set. Uh, that's the open data set that we are going to download. Now that data set has some problem. You know, the data types are not, um, you know, same across the different uh, files that we have. Hence, you know, we need to do some sort of data converse, data type conversion. That is something we are going to do it here using a Spark notebook. And then we are going to keep the data in the branch layer. Now that branch layer is going to be uh, our, you know, source for our data lake, right? In the branch layer, we are going to have the data in binary format, binary parquet format. But we'll make sure that all the files that we are keeping, every file are having the same type of format so that in our subsequent step, we do not have any issues with the data types. And then we are going to use the ADF pipeline. Uh, it's not the data factory pipeline, but it's the data factory pipeline, which is integrated inside the Microsoft Fabric product. So we are going to use the um, pipeline and also we are going to use Spark Notebook. So using these two, we are going to take those parquet file and then convert it as a delta um, table. Now, in this two uh, zone, the data is being kept in the ADLS Gen 2. This is the external ADLS Gen 2. It has nothing to do with Microsoft Fabric. Now, with this ADLS Gen 2, what we have done, we have created shortcuts. So that means we have mounted this ADLS Gen 2 to, to these two zones so that we can uh, access this data from the compute that we have in Fabric. Now, in the silver layer, when we, when we are converting this binary files data to the delta table, we are going to store that data as delta table in one leg. What is one leg? So one leg, you know, we can think of it's a it's a ADLS Gen2, which is embedded with the Microsoft Fabric product or native to the Microsoft Fabric product. Now, once the data uh, is there in the uh, delta table, so that is basically a raw data, but in a tabular format. We are going to put some like this is where we have the lake house. Right, and from this lake house, we are going to convert this data, or we are going to create one data warehouse. Now, while we are creating this lake from this lake house to the data warehouse, we are going to use the SQL store procedure, where we'll be applying some business logic. 
uh, here I do not have a good business logic. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean the data um, in a way that you know that data is acceptable. Like you know, we do not have the junk data in the data warehouse. And also one 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 of the thing that I'm going to do here, we are going to segregate the data into fact and dimension table so that it, it is it becomes really easy for the data modeling piece. Now once we have the data in the data warehouse, the data is ready. Now we are going to have the Power BI report to consume that. So in the demo, I, I, I'm just going to go step by step. I got three um, you know, files downloaded. So probably I'm just going to run this demo with the three files. And uh, before the demo, I have already ingested around 144 to 150 files in the, in the lake house. So let's get into the demo. So LH Yolo Taxi is the lake house that I have, right? How to create a lake house? It's pretty easy. So we need to go to a workspace. And you know, there are multiple you know, objects that we can create inside one workspace. Now there is no limitation. Like in, in 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 one workspace, we can basically create multiple assets. So there is no limitation there. Now for us, what is the first thing that we need to do is to create one lake house. So lake house is something we can just create it from here. So I have already created a lake house. So let me get into that lake house. Some few tables, and then I basically have some you know few files. So if I go back to the architecture that I that we have, right? So now here we are going to have the binary files. So let's look into here now I have the raw zone. So in this raw zone, what I have, I basically got three files, um, you know, downloaded. Now these files do have some problem with the data types. Now from the raw layer, I'm going to send this data to the branch layer, doing the data conversion. So that is something I am going to do it using a notebook. And already in the blog post, I have provided the link, so you can you can go and check out the code. So now what I'm just going to do, I uh, you know there are a couple of uh, settings that are required. So these are the settings which are required by Microsoft Fabric to optimize the delta write, right? So if we use that, um, the delta that is written, that would be view order enabled, which is really good for Power BI to read or the other computers to read. And the read operation is going to be really fast if we enable the view order. So I have the 2023 data. So let me just put 2023 here. So let me run this. Now, so here is the difference compared to Azure Synapse, right? In Azure Synapse, what used to happen, like it, we used to have one uh, pool. So it used to take around four to five minutes to start up. But here we have a provision compute for us, right? So when we are going to buy a capacity with the capacity, we are going to get a starter pool. And that starter pool can be uh, enabled for us within a second. So you can see like, you know, I just clicked it and, you know, I was able to run this. So let me just run this code. So now I got these three files in, in my branch layer. So let's go back to the blog. So now I got the files in the branch layer. And now the next thing that we need to do, now these two, that the files that, um, you know, we're looking at, all those are sitting in a external ADLS Gen2, not so far in inside Microsoft Fabric. So that is the reason why we can see this uh, icon uh, called shortcut icon. So that means it is sitting somewhere else. And, you know, we are basically attaching our uh, Fabric compute to, uh, to those ex external storage. Now this external storage not necessarily be like Azure, uh, you know, Blob storage or ADLS Gen2, it can be any other cloud provider storage as well. So we got the data in the branch list. The next thing that we are going to do, we are going to run a pipeline. So there are two ways we can do. We can run a pipeline and we can read those parquet file and you know put those parquet file as a delta table. Also, we can just you know do it from a Spark notebook. So let's look into the pipeline capability for now. Filter it to the pipeline so that I can only see the data pipeline. And for me, I think this is the one. So let's look into this. Okay, so by the time it is loading, let's first look into it, like how many uh, records that we have in the lake house, right? So this is something we can we can quickly check. So uh, just to check the record, what we can do, uh, we can we can basically run it. Uh, a, a uh, you know we can load this tables data into a data frame, and then we can just do a count. But also we we have a uh, approach where we can uh, use the SQL endpoint to uh, look into the data. So let's do that. So if I just go to the lake house. I can basically switch to the SQL endpoint. Now, this, what is the difference between the Lakehouse and the SQL endpoint? In Lakehouse, we can basically do the Spark things, right? We can use even uh, Spark SQL also we can use. But in the SQL endpoint, we can, it's, it's basically a serverless compute using, you know, T-SQL serverless compute using which we can write the code in T-SQL and query the Lakehouse. 
and only we would be able to do the read only operation like we won't be able to do ddl or dml operation here so let me just quickly get into the sql endpoint and then we'll just try to understand the current state of the devil and after that probably we'll load and then be able to understand the differences we have 1.3 billion data right now uh, in the table right so now uh, we'll go to the adf pipeline uh, the data pipeline that i have so in the data pipeline what we are doing we basically have bronze to silver so in the source site what uh, uh, what we are doing like you know we are getting into uh, uh, the the file path the bronze layer and uh, we are recursively uh, going and you know looking looking into each of the file and then we are storing that data in a, in our lake house and this is the table name and obviously we are running it multiple times so that means the new files will be new files would be coming and the data would be appended into our delta table and once the copy is completed what we are doing those data into from the bronze layer to a backup layer so that next time when i run the job i do not insert the duplicates right so in the source site i taking the data from the bronze layer and sending it to a backup layer so let me just run this So now we can see the job is successful. So what basically happened? Uh, it it uh, read around nine millions data, nine point five million data, nine point three million data, and then you know it was able to just read it, uh, write it that nine point uh, you know three million data. So now yes. we can just go back to this table and quickly look into the current count. I can now see the new data uh, came in here. So this is the new data that that I have right now. So that that's how you know uh, I can beta data uh, from the ADLS Gen two and uh, move that data into our lake house. We have already moved our uh, the trip taxi trip data into the lake house. The next thing that we need to do, we need to move the uh, reference data that we have. Now, for the reference data, what we have done, we have already created one container in the ADLS Gen 2, and we have kept those reference data here. Now, what we can do again, the same, you know, we can basically use the same pipeline. Uh, we can use the copy activity, and we can just move this CSV file into the data deck uh, in, into our delta lake table. So now, once this is done, we also have a capability that you know from the lake house we can do the Power BI reporting. So you can see from the lake house we can actually use the Power BI data set, and from this Power BI data set we can create a Power BI report. So now this is the Power BI report that uh, that I have. Now here we are going to use the direct lake capabilities. From right? the lake house we can basically create a new Power BI data set. Now In the new Power BI data, data set we can include the tables that we want to be included in our data model. Can we can create multiple Power BI data set out of one lake house. So it's a many to one relationship. This is the Power BI data set that I have created from the lake house. Now we can see these are the tables that is included. Now if we create this data model, we would be able to see the, this ex, the, the data model where I, I have created the relationship between the different tables that I have. So it's basically a start schema. Now if we just look into the storage mode, so it is showing the direct lake mode. Now from from our Power BI report, what we can do, we can basically go to this open data lake hub, and then we can go to the Power BI data set. And you know, since already a uh, connection is there, I'm just not going to do it, but we would be able to phase the data model into our Power BI desktop, and then we can do the report authoring or report development here. So let me just refresh this, and let's see that you know if the new data came in. Okay, so the report got you know refreshed. Uh, as you can see, it was before 1.36 billion. Now it's 1.37 billion. So this is how we can, you know, basically uh, do the reporting from the lake house. And now one thing that I can see that, you know, the data that I have, uh, you know, the date range is from 2001 to 2098, uh, which which is not looking great. And so then, you know, we need to do some kind of data cleansing. Now this data cleansing is something we are going to do it in the next next part. So now we are in the silver layer. What we are going to do now. So this is the lake house that we are in, and now we are going to create a data warehouse. Now, from this lake house, we are going to create a SQL Server stored procedure, and are going to do some, you know, uh, we are going to filter out few of those junk data, and then uh, the the refined data we are going to put it in the data warehouse that we have. So for that, what we need to do, we need to first create a data warehouse. So this data warehouse is something I have already created. So let's get into uh, the DW YOLO taxi data warehouse. So as you can see that, you know, here I can I can basically see the uh, DW YOLO taxi data. And then uh, I also, you know, from the store procedure, I have segregated the data into the diamond, like reference data I have put it into a dimension table and the transactional data that I had, which is related to the trip, that is, I have put it in a uh, fact table. And store procedure where I am using this begin, try and begin, try um, 
block and I'm loading all the data together uh, into uh, into our data warehouse, right? So if any of the loading fails, uh, I basically fail the whole operation, right? So we do not load the parcel data. Now, one thing to be noticed here, uh, we are basically performing a multi-table transaction because I have this table here, you know, then Dim Holidays table. Now, this is something we can't do using in our lake house. So lake house support only one table transaction. It can't do the multi-table transaction, right? So this is something we can do it in our data warehouse. Now, since I got some new data in our lake house, so let's, uh, you know, refresh our um, data warehouse. So let's do that. So let me just run this. While it is running, so let me just show you the other option as well. So we basically have one more model option here. So previously that I was showing, that was a Power BI data set connecting to a lake house using the direct lake mode. And there we were creating the um, data model. Now here it is basically associated with the data warehouse. We can create multiple data warehouse uh, in one workspace. You know, that might point to two different uh, lake house or it, that might point to, to a same lake house. Now once we got this data in, in this data warehouse, right? We can basically create a model uh, out of the tables that uh, we already have. So we have already created the star schema out of that fact and you know dimension table. So let's let's go back to the query. It got succeeded in two minutes thirty seconds and it's doing a full load. So that means all the reference data, all the dimension table and the fact tables that I have, I basically refreshed all of them. Now I'll quickly go to the Power BI report. The data is, is basically loaded. So now we, we can even see that the pickup date is actually from a, a from the correct date time to, uh, uh, to the current date. So the data was there till March 2023. As we saw that, you know, the date, we kept the data in the uh, ADLS Gen 2 uh, as, a, as a binary data. And then using the Microsoft Fabric, we took that data, we ingested it, we processed it, we cleansed that data, and then you know made that data ready for the data visualization, where we created the data model uh, once in a lake house, and again we created the data model um, in the data warehouse. This now, data flow diagram, you know, can be uh, you know modified as per your requirement. Hopefully, you know this uh, short demo uh, would be helping you, you know, implementing your fast use case in Microsoft Fabric. Um, if you have any question, please let me know uh, in, in the comment section.